Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Head of Strategy for Magento Commerce, Peter Sheldon. Welcome everyone. I have the privilege of being the last session of the day, so I'm aware there's me between you and drinks. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we finish on time. Um, welcome. I, I'm here to take you through one of, you know, it's been a very, very exciting product launch for us, which is Magento Enterprise Cloud Edition. Now, you know, when we think about cloud and SaaS, um, we've been wanting to do this for a long, long time at Magento. Uh, you know, we've known, that, you know, the, the shift in the market, uh, the, the need and desire from, you know, our merchants and retailers to have that sort of simplified deployment option to have the, the scalability of the cloud. And, and you know, we, we, we had to get Magento 2 out first. And so, as you'll note, you know, we launched, we we launched this uh, back in April at the Imagine conference, um, and, and this was really sort of priority number two after getting Magento 2 out of the door. And so, you know, what we're going to talk about a little bit today is what is Magento Enterprise Cloud Edition? Um, you know, how does it differ from Enterprise Edition? How does it differ from other SaaS solutions on the market? And I think that one of the key things to talk about is this difference between SaaS and, and cloud. Now, we're, as I'm sure all of you in the room are sort of big advocates of SaaS. You know, we use SaaS internally ourselves. We use Salesforce.com for our CRM. We use, you know, NetSuite for our ERP. You know, we're, we're big believers in SaaS software. Um, but SaaS software is great for sort of B2B and back office systems. Um, when it comes to the front office, though, when it comes to digital user experience, we believe that you know single tenancy and having control is really really key, and and the reason for that is when we look at some of our competitors in the marketplace that are true sort of multi-tenant SaaS e-commerce, we find this sort of Stepford Wives um, sort of uh, conundrum happening a lot. That you know, we, and, and when we can you know we see this, I'm sure you can. When we look at some of our sort of multi-tenant SaaS competitors, you can spot their sites a mile off because you know there's that sort of same paradigm, the same structure. And one of the challenges of, of sort of multi-tenant SaaS in a digital um, consumer-facing experience is, is creating differentiation. You're constrained by the APIs that the vendor offers you. You're constrained by certain um, sort of workflows and templates. And so, you know, what's key to the Magento merchant is building highly um, differentiated, highly unique experiences. And so what was important to us as we sort of thought what cloud means for Magento is to make sure that we didn't restrict any of the flexibility that, you, that, that you know, the Magento merchants um, have come to sort of rely upon and is so key to the value prop of Magento. And so, you know, for us, um, you know, the, the, the single tenancy is really, really important, making sure um, that, that, you know, our system integrators, our merchants, our developers have the same ability to customize Magento, the same ability to do unique things with Magento that you're used to doing with Enterprise Edition. The other challenge with sort of true multi-tenant SaaS is that once you're in, you're locked in, and there's no way out. Um, you know, you go to any of our competitors that have a multi-tenant SaaS vendor uh, or, or platform, and once you've signed your contracts, once you're, once you're in that platform, it's very, very difficult to get out. In fact, there is no way to take ownership of the software. You know, you are uh, simply, you know, leasing the software, and if you ever, uh, you know, find limitations with the capabilities, if the, if the vendor goes out of business, et cetera, there is no way to to take ownership of the code. Uh, you have to migrate off and, and, and do a, 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 a replatforming exercise. And so again, this is sort of key to the value prop of, of Enterprise Cloud Edition, that we let you um, convert between Cloud Edition back to Enterprise Edition. So at any point, if you know, you're happy with Magento, but you're not happy with our cloud services, that's fine. We'll let you migrate your contract from Cloud Edition back to Enterprise Edition. You can take the code. You can take what you've built. It's your IP, and, and you can go and take it elsewhere. So that's key to the value prop for us um, when we brought this, uh, this solution to market. And then when you think about sort of, you know, cloud today, um, you know, this is really top of mind for, you know, CIOs and CTOs. In fact, this is um, a survey from Gartner. Um, you know, 88% of uh, organizations now say they have a cloud-first strategy. And so over here in, in on the right, you see, you know, what are the reasons for that cloud-first strategy? It's, uh, um, you know, reduced dependencies on IT, reduced, uh, you know, IT costs, um, you know, making the organization more agile. And so there's been this big, big shift towards cloud, and it's really what drove us um, to, to, to bring uh, Cloud Edition to market. 
So let's talk about Cloud Edition and get into a, a deep dive and, and, and sort of describe what it is uh, and, and why it is we built it. So the first thing that's very, very important for us was to sort of um, find a partner for the underlying um, infrastructure, the IaaS infrastructure as a service. Um, and we, we spend a lot of time evaluating the different cloud um, uh, providers out there in the market. Um, and we, we came to a strategic partnership with, with Amazon AWS for the underlying infrastructure. And there's a lot of reasons that we, um, that we decided to partner with, with, with Amazon. Um, the first, and actually the main reason, is we did a survey of our existing merchants. And so this is uh, built with data looking at all of the current enterprise edition uh, sites that are, that, that are out there running. And today already, before we even launch Cloud Edition, 23% of our merchants are running their Magento 2, or sorry, their Magento Enterprise Edition uh, sites on AWS. And we've seen this consistently, you know, as we talk to merchants, you know, we've seen a lot of merchants migrate from their dedicated hosting over to AWS for the cloud. So we, kn we knew already that, you know, even though perhaps we were a little late to the game, that this, this move to cloud was already well underway for, for Magento. We also spend a lot of time talking to industry analysts and to experts, and, and AWS at the moment anyway is by far the clear leader in, ca in terms of the capabilities, in terms of the global availability of the services, in terms of the security. So you know, we wanted to make sure that we were um, going out with a best-in-class solution, and we believe AWS gives us that best-in-class solution. We're also in very good hands with AWS. These are just some of the uh, client logos of, of companies running on, on Amazon. And Amazon really is the sort of dominant de facto cloud services provider these days. And, and so when we looked at our, um, uh, at our sort of joint customers, not, not all these, these are AWS customers, but we found a lot of overlap between the customers who are using Magento uh, and those same customers already hosting both Magento as well as their other enterprise applications on AWS. You know, also very important to us was the sort of security accreditations and certifications that AWS has, um, you know, across the board and all of the different regions that they operate. Um, again, best in class security, which is really, really key to us. So this is, you know, very, very important for us as we were looking for that, uh, uh, you know, finding the right provider for the infrastructure. And then, you know, the availability of regions. You know, we're a global company. Our merchants are global, um, and, and you know, our, our merchants are deploying all around the globe. And so, with AWS, there are 11 uh, different what we call AWS regions that we allow you to, to deploy into. So, if you're in North America, you can deploy in North Virginia, in Oregon, in North California. Um, you know, here in Europe, you can deploy in Ireland and Frankfurt today. Um, and very shortly, you'll be able to deploy here in the UK. Amazon opening a, a data center center here in London, so that's really, really key for, for, for the UK market, and in Asia and, and Latin America as well. Um, right now, we're, we, we're, we're, we're not in Beijing, but that's something that we hope to be able to offer in the future for AWS as well, is the uh, you know, entrance into, in, into the Chinese market. So this is, this is really, really key. It gives you that sort of origin hosting close to where your, your customers are and close to where your merchants are. Now, one of the things, if you saw in that last slide, there were numbers inside of each of the bubbles. These are how many what Amazon call availability zones. And, and let me describe what an availability zone is and why it's important and why it matters. So you, the, Amazon has these regions. So if you're here um, in the UK today, you would probably deploy into the, uh, into the Ireland uh, region. But inside of the Ireland region, there are free availability zones. And these availability zones are effectively different data centers. Um, and each data center has its own independent um, uh, networking, cooling, um, security generators, etc. They're even on different floodplains. So they're geographically different uh, independent data centers. And this is important to us because it, it, it's what part of what allows us to deliver very, very high SLA to, to, to the merchants. So when we look at sort of the underlying architecture of how we deploy uh, Magento in the cloud, what we do is we, we have this uh, sort of triple redundant infrastructure. So as we deploy, we deploy on three separate, um, completely redundant instances. But we don't just deploy on sort of three servers in the same data center. What we do is we deploy on three separate servers in three separate availability zones. And so this means although Amazon has you know, best in class availability and, and very, very rarely do they have any kind of outage, but in the scenario where they did have an outage in one data center, 
the other two nodes of the, of the Magento um, infrastructure stack would be running in different availability zones. And so you know, we get this very, very high level of, of underlying redundancy through the architecture that we, that we use for the Magento cloud. And this is really, really key to being able, for, for us to be able to offer that 99.99 um, availability. Now, the, um, if we sort of look about the, you know, the, the availability in the SLA that we're offering with the Cloud Edition, the, you know, the sort of traditional hosting SLA gives you, um, you know, hosting for the, uh, you know, for the network connection and the, and, and the power. But what we've what we've done here is to give you, you know, the sort of full-blown SLA across the whole stack. Um, so because, you know, we're, we, we're operating on your behalf, the physical servers, the operating system, as well as all of the services, so um, Nginx and, you know, MySQL and PHP and Solar and so forth, we're, we're offering the whole stack across this SLA. And because the whole stack is independently reproduced three times in this triple redundant environment, um, you know, we're able to offer this best-in-class 99.99 SLA. So so we're really, really excited about that. You know, it, it's it's really key to our merchants that you know, um, uh, especially during the holiday period and, and sort of peak surge times, that you have that um, you know class leading SLA, and, and this really is best in class. So so we're super excited that this has been you know part of the architecture that we that we developed. So that's a little bit on the underlying sort of infrastructure. Um, AWS based, you know, hopefully gives you a good sense of why we selected Amazon as our strategic partner for the underlying infrastructure. Now, next, as we sort of started thinking about well, what does cloud mean for Magento, you know, we, we really wanted this to be something that was differentiated in the market. We didn't just want to become a hosting uh, provider. We have a lot of partners who are already provide hosting for Magento. We really wanted to create an offering that was different differentiated um, and, and, and really empowered our merchants to take control of their environment. And so it was really key for us that we, prov that we provided um, PaaS tools, a platform as a service. Um, and we partnered with a, a company here in, in the UK, Platform.sh, who provides the underlying PaaS capabilities of the Magento Cloud. So let's get into what PaaS is, because PaaS is sometimes a little bit misunderstood. Like, what's the difference between a SaaS and a PaaS? You know, how, do they, how are they different? Why does PaaS matter to me, especially as a, as a business owner? So if we look at sort of the underlying um, sort of stack, and I'll start from the left and work to the right. So in a traditional sort of uh, old hosting model where you would host everything yourself on premise, you were responsible for the whole stack, everything from the data center, because it was your data center with your power supply, the networking, the servers, the storage, um, all the way through to the Magento application itself. So that was sort of the traditional on-premise model. Then came along, you know, the the the, the cloud uh, providers like AWS and Azure and others, um, with who provide the infrastructure as a service. Now, if you just if you deploy in a traditional uh, sort of go direct, take your Magento, put it directly into AWS, which you can do, um, then in AWS manages for you the underlying data center and the um, the servers and the virtualization of those servers and network and the storage. But you as a merchant are still responsible for the operating system running on those servers, um, the databases, the security, and the application itself, Magento. Now, what, we, what we're able to do with PaaS is to sort of take that responsibility that Magento is taking off your shoulders, the burden that we're taking off you, sort of further up the stack. So as well as, obviously, having AWS manage the underlying infrastructure, we, through um, uh, you know, operating the, the cloud, are also going to manage your, the operating system, the databases, and the security of the environment. That means that we're going to apply all the patches to the database, all the patches to the Nginx, all the, the patches to uh, allow Search. We're going to manage the uh, environment, make sure that it's up to date, that it's secure, that we're doing all of the uh, that the patching and upgrades of the of the environment. But what's key is that you, as a merchant, still own the application. It's your application. It's your instance of Magento. It's single tenant code, and and you have access to source code. You have access to do all of the customizations and integrations and extensions that you're used to doing with Magento. And that's fundamentally different from the SaaS world. In the SaaS world, if you look, think about our SaaS competitors, they own the application, not you. You're just leasing access to the application from them. Um, and so you can access that application through the APIs that they provide you, through the, the storefront they provide you, and for, through the business user tools. But you're constrained by you know, the customizations and, uh, that you can do through, through those APIs. 
with Magento Enterprise Cloud Edition, it's, we're, we're running Magento inside of the pass. And so you have control. You control your destiny. Um, you know, we are delivering on a roadmap. You can see the sessions tomorrow. You're going to see what we, what's coming. You're going to hear about all of this sort of exciting announcements in, in the Magento platform. But we know that most of our merchants need to and demand to go faster than we're going, that you want to innovate at a very, very fast pace, and that you don't want to be beholden to our roadmap. And this is really, really key to us, because in the SaaS world, you are you know, limited to the, you know, the releases that the, the SaaS vendor is doing. And if there's a feature or functionality that's you know critical to your business. You're usually pretty constrained to wait, you know, lobbying that the, the vendor and working with them to get that onto their roadmap and get it out into production. Whereas you know with Magento in the cloud, it's just like Magento Enterprise Edition. You know, it's your code. You can you can innovate at, 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 at the, the pace that's appropriate for you. So that's kind of the key differentiation between sort of the pass and the SaaS. Now, what, why else is the pass important? Um, the past tools give us really, really great capabilities to do um, agile scaling. So as part of the, the service of Magento Enterprise Cloud Edition, we're sitting monitoring your environment for you. Uh, you know, we have a 24 by 7 uh, NOC, a network operations center, uh, and we're monitoring the AWS environment. We're looking at your traffic, um, and, and we're sort of making sure that the uh, environment that you're deployed on uh, has enough capacity to deal with the, the, the traffic that you're getting from, from your customers. And so typically, you know, when, we, when we onboard you as a merchant, we're going to work with you. We're going to look at all of your site traffic uh, statistics, we're going to look at your page views and your orders and your sessions and so forth, and we're going to work with you and we'll, and we'll recommend a sort of baseline um, configuration, a baseline uh, AWS configuration that should sort of hold true for, you know, your sort of standard variances in traffic that you see during sort of normal day-to-day -day operations. But we know, especially during the holidays, during, during Favre's Day, during Valentine's Day, during your special merchandising and sale events, the, the traffic can go crazy, that you get these crazy, crazy um, peaks or surges in, in, in traffic. Now, if you know they're going to happen, you can pre-warn us, and we can effectively uh, warm up a larger environment for you. But even if you, you, you know, you were, this was unanticipated traffic, you, you know, unexpected traffic, we will start to see that. And, and very quickly, in an automated fashion, we, the past tools allow us to to vertically scale the, the AWS environment. And so the way we do this is we have um, three independent clusters of, of, of the, um, the Magento application. We take one down. We double the underlying size of the, inf the AWS EC2 infrastructure. We bring it back up, and we do that across all three clusters. And we actually do that very, very quickly. And so we can quickly, very quickly, double the underlying compute capacity in a completely seamless um, way with, with no outages, no loss of sessions to the customers browsing your site. And if that's not enough, we can do it again and again and again to keep adding capacity to the environment. Um, so th this is how the, the sort of the scale, the automated scaling of Magento Cloud works. And included in the price, um, we, we basically include um, a, a set amount of sort of um, what we would call sort of overage capacity. This is the ability to scale up that environment um, based on uh, sort of, un uh, you know, it, it, or either expected or unexpected surges in traffic. So the past tools are really, really key to this sort of automated um, uh, uh, scaling. And if you were to sort of do this yourselves directly with AWS, you can do this, but you need to sort of engineer it yourselves and you need to manage it yourselves. Whereas in the Cloud Edition, we're managing it for you. Now, the other thing is that the PaaS environment gives a whole bunch of really, really cool tools to the uh, DevOps teams and the release management teams. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of technical stuff in here, and there's a great session tomorrow. Um, my colleague, Doug MacGyver, who's our uh, cloud product manager, is giving a session tomorrow on the sort of technical side of the PaaS tools. And th there's a whole uh, cloud um, UX here that gives the release management people sort of tools to manage all of their different environments, do pushes to production, and so forth. But there's some key sort of business benefits as to why this is important. The first is the way that we do um, deployments are highly predictable and, and fail-proof, because everything is done from your source code, from your Git repository. So you're guaranteed that the, um, the production server is the exact same configuration as the staging server, and the code that you've successfully pushed to staging and done all your regression testing on will be the exact same code that is pushed to production. Um, the production environment is read-only. You can't go in there and just sort of change some code in production. It won't let you do that. Um, so it's a highly 
repeatable, resilient um, deployment. And so the, the, the business goal behind this is to give you as the merchant the confidence to do very frequent repeat per, uh, pushes to production. This idea of, hey, we're only doing a release once a month. If that goes out of the window, you can do multiple releases a day if you want to and have the confidence to do that and get to this very, very rapid um, regression cycle test push to production. You know, we talk about um, sort of providing quicker code to market. Another thing you can do very nicely with the past tools is clone the production environment. So if you do have an issue in production um, and you, know, you need to diagnose that, you're not sure what it is, um, you can click a button and clone that environment to a staging environment, to a non-production environment. It takes about two minutes to do, um, and you can actually cleanse the data as well. So you can uh, set it to remove any customer-sensitive data, email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, that type of thing. So you get an exact clone of production um, that you can then, uh, you know, if this you're trying to diagnose what the issues are, or maybe you just need a clone of production. You can do that very, very quickly. So that's a really cool tool. Um, it also gives you a full non-production environment. So um, typically your developers will still develop locally on their local machines, but all of your QA sites, your regression testing sites, your you know, sites that you give um, the uh, uh, you know, out for user acceptance testing, they all run inside of the pass environment and they're all non-production sites. And you can have as many of them as you want. You can spin them up straight from your, your uh, code repository. It takes a minute or two to you know, spin up a new environment. Um, you can do merges, you can tear them down. And so what this is really cool for is you know, as a developer, you've made some changes. You want to get it hands, into the hands of the business user to do the, the, uh, the user acceptance testing. You can just literally right click, create a new site, copy the, the unique URL for that uh, staging environment and send it to the business user, copy and paste it in IM and say, hey, check out, the, check out the changes I've made. Is this what you were looking for? So it really sort of enables that rapid development, sort of continuous integration um, testing between the developers and the business. Um, all of this is sort of controlled by permissions and, and who can do what, so you can have large uh, agile development teams all working on the same project, but all with different permissions of who can do what and, and who has access to which instances. So you may have a UAT environment that's sort of in lockdown with only a few users who are allowed in there, obviously very restrictive permissions as to who can go into production, who can do pushes to production, so very granular control around users and permissions and who can do, who can do code pushes. Um, and, and part of the goal of this is to actually put some of the, the power of the sort of traditional release management into the hands of the business user to say, hey, you know, the business user, you can actually, this is pretty simple stuff. You can go in here and you can right click and, and uh, you know, clone an environment, push to production and really empower you to do that sort of last push and not have to go and interrupt the developer. The developer's job's done, they've coded. You know, they, you, you kind of want to leave them alone and make sure you're not interrupting them. And in a traditional environment, the developer's always getting interrupted to do sort of, you know, medial kind of release management tasks. And the whole goal of this is to automate a lot of those release management tasks and make it super simple, super quick and easy. And then finally, we're doing um, constant backups. Um, we, we back up your entire production environment every six hours, so we take a complete snapshot. Um, we, we keep that, all of those backups for, uh, I think, 14 days. Um, and you can take a snapshot at any time. So if you're about to do a release to production, you can just click snapshot, take a snapshot, a backup of production, uh, very, very quick. You do your release, if you've got a problem, single click to roll back again. So very, very easy. In a traditional hosting environment, you can do that, but that typically requires putting tickets into your hosting provider, phone calls, it's not a quick and easy process. In this pass environment, taking backups and doing restores becomes very, very easy, not just on production, but on any of your environments. So we believe, sort of in aggregate, these tools are actually really, really powerful for the Magento merchant. It allows you to really go faster and have the confidence to quickly um, go from the, the ink drying on the developer's keyboard to, to having that value in production and, and uh, you know, adding, uh, you know, sort of allowing you to innovate faster. So we have the pass. Now, inside the pass runs Magento, and it's nice, plain Jane, nice and simple, Magento 2 Enterprise Edition. We did not go away and build a SaaS version of Magento. We did not go away and re-engineer Magento to be multi-tenant. That would have taken us a long, long time, and it would have been against the core values of, what, of, of Magento. So it is the exact same code base as Magento 2 Enterprise Edition. There are no differences whatsoever. We did not fork the code. Um, we have no intent to fork the code. So, you know, the advantage is here that you still get that single tenancy architect 
architecture. All of the extensions and marketplace that run on Enterprise Edition also work on Enterprise Cloud Edition. You have full access to source code, so there's no, we don't put any limitations on you know, what you can customize, how you can customize. We provide guidelines of best practices of how to do uh, customizations in Cloud Edition, but ultimately, we're, we're not constraining you. There's, there's nothing you can't do. If you could do it on Enterprise Edition, you can do it in Enterprise Cloud Edition. And, 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 and you know, the, in, in the same way, you know, all of the patches and feature releases that we do, uh, it's the exact same code. So as we release Enterprise Edition 2.1, you know, well, we've also released Enterprise Cloud Edition 2.1. They are the same code base. So this is really, really key. You know, we're providing you this environment where Magento lives, but it's the same Magento. We haven't changed anything. Next, as part of this stack, what is Cloud Edition? We then provide with, um, as part of the, the price, all-inclusive, a couple of really, really great tools. And so, as you're familiar, um, you know, two great partners that we have are New Relic and Blackfire, who provide best-in-class um, performance management tools. Now, many of you probably already use these tools, or your system integrators already use these tools, but we've now made this part of the, 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 the core offering in, in Cloud Edition. So we ship the full-blown version of uh, New Relic APM, which is our application performance monitoring tool. And, and APM is really there to allow you to sort of monitor the health of your site, um, catch issues early on. If, uh, you know, if there's just been a release and there's an issue with that release, it's causing performance issues or it's causing a you know, broken checkout you know, workflow or some kind of you know, issue on the site, be able to identify that very, very early on with APM in production and actually start sort of doing that deep dive diagnosis into what is the actual issue and what's causing it. Um, so really, really powerful tools and uh, allow you to do that straight in the, uh, in, in the production environment. We also ship um, a free trial of uh, New Relic Insights, and we've been working with New Relic to build some really great dashboards. So this is a little bit different from APM. APM is giving you more sort of technical health um, stats on the health of the infrastructure and the health of the application. Insights are giving you uh, insights into the health of the business. You know, what are your key metrics? And so we've developed a whole set of dashboards that we ship with this that give you sort of full business reporting into everything from your, you know, your AOV and your visitors on your site to you know, all of the, the general metrics that you want to sort of measure and track your business on. Um, and, you know, if, uh, and, and, and this is a reporting tool set, so you can go and develop additional new dashboards. You can work with New Relic, with Magento, with your own developers um, to build additional uh, dashboards and, and capabilities into this. So this is really, really exciting. And then we also provide um, Blackfire, which is a, um, a, a, a sort of profiling tool that lets you actually go and find what is the root cause of the problem. So let's say you, know, you did do a release into production in the cloud environment. Um, perhaps you were you, you know, using an, an extension or there was a customization that had just been built by a development team and there is some kind of issue. It's causing a performance problem or you know, there's, there's, it's causing some kind of experience outage on the site. Blackfire actually allows you to um, sort of diagnose what the root cause of the issue is um, looking into the actual code stack, uh, but doing it in an isolated way just for a single session and single user. So it's running in production, lets you diagnose in production, but without, provide, without causing any performance issues for all the other users in production. So the nice thing about this is in the past, if you had an issue, you would have to call your hosting provider, have them, you know, do a copy paste of your production environment, deploy it into a staging environment, then go in there and use sort of profiling tools and so forth. Here with these tools, hopefully we don't even need to actually do that clone to staging. We can go straight to production and diagnose the root cause of the issue, get back to the developers, have them fix it, check it into GitHub, and then push straight to staging, check it's working, push straight to production. It's about rapid fixing problems. Then, so, so we, we provide the, the Blackfire new, and, and, and uh, New Relic um, tools. And then on top of it, sort of the, the last piece of this is a CDN. Now, as we were sort of architecting this, we spent a lot of time looking at a lot of the different CDN providers. And ultimately, we, um, we, we decided to, to, to work with Fastly as sort of the, the, the de facto default CDN with Magento Cloud. 
And there's very good reason for that. Firstly, um, it really comes down to the underlying technology of Fastly. If you're familiar with Magento 2, um, we invested heavily in Varnish as our caching technology for Magento 2. And, and Fastly also is built around Varnish. And so what we effectively do here is push the Varnish cache out to the edge of the, of the Fastly network. And so Fastly have their points of presence um, all over the globe. And, you know, and, and they're, they're adding more um, you know, over time. And so it puts that, that page cache and the content caching right there, right out there at the edge, and takes a lot of the load off of the origin server. Um, so this is this is this is really exciting, and again, this is included in the price um, based on the underlying server configuration you have. We give a very generous um, allowance of uh, of CDN bandwidth, um, all inclusive in the price, and we also provide DDoS detect um, sorry a DDoS pr um, protection as well as part of the Fastly offering. Um, so we're protecting you against those denial of service attacks in, uh, through the Magento Cloud. So, you know, there's a tight technical and UX integration um, with Magento 2 um, through, through Fastly. So, um, the, the, you, you know, you, you, you take a lot of the load off of the server, ultimately lowering the cost of ownership because we're, we're moving a lot of the, uh, the caching out to the edge. And so the load on the AWS environment is ultimately significantly lowered, um, which lowers your cost and lowers the price at which we can offer um, Cloud Edition to our merchants. You can go in and configure inside of the admin panel and, and change, you know, caching settings and control settings and, uh, you know, expiration settings for your cache and there's whole tutorials and education on, on best practices there. You can obviously cache all of the static content, the images, the catalog, um, but you can also um, cache uh, sort of constantly changing things like prices and inventory. Um, and we, we have this really neat capability with Fastly to instantly invalidate anything. So we can cache the whole content of the page, things like inventory levels, but the second on the back end we know that that inventory has changed, we can push an instantaneous message out to the entire Fastly network to say invalidate the cache just for that quantity level on the page. And so the next user that comes in, it will they go back to the origin servers to get the up-to-date um, uh, uh, price or, or inventory level to show on the page. And that's quite differentiated versus some of the other CDN solutions on the market where you can invalidate the cache, but there's a delay. Um, with the Fastly solution, it's instantaneous. And that's really, really key um, for being able to um, cache things like inventory and pricing that change on a very, very regular basis. So that's the stack. Now, around all of this, we wrap Magento. Um, so it's a single contract from us, um, one throat to choke, one price, uh, single contract. Um, we're providing 24 by 7 P1 application uh, monitoring and infrastructure support to the whole uh, ticketing system. If you need to submit a ticket at the, in the middle of the morning, um, you can do that. Um, we've got uh, industry-leading SLAs around the response times for those tickets. Um, we're monitoring the environment and we're doing that dynamic scaling if need be. And so we're monitoring your environment if you have an unsuspect, you know, unexpected surge in traffic, you know, there's a sales event that marketing didn't tell you was happening, um, you know, we're there, we've got your back covered, we're going to scale up that AWS environment dynamically and make sure your site stays up, make sure your site stays performant. Um, in the future, we're, one of the things we're working on in the roadmap is to do sort of proactive patch application. Um, this, is, this is coming a little bit later in, in the year, but what we're going to do here is as we're releasing um, uh, patches to the environment, We'll effectively go in and, and create a, a branch of your production environment, um, apply the patch for you, and run a whole set of regression and, and uh, tests, um, uh, a, a sort of automated testing suite against that uh, branch. Now, we don't own the application, you own the application, so we would never push uh, anything to production um, without your permission, but we'll basically give you a report and say, hey, we've applied the patch, and you know, here's the, here's the diagnosis report of that patch. We believe that it is good to go to production in Ultimately, the merchant can do their own user acceptance testing and push that to production. So that's something that we're going to be delivering a little later in the year. Um, and all of this is solution partner friendly. In the same way that you work with a system integrator or a digital agency today, nothing changes. Um, you know, the, the, your system integrator is still your kind of like, uh, you, you know, the lead for your solution. You, you have a problem, you're probably going to call your system integrator first. Um, they have the same access to the pass environment that you, that, that you do. Um, they, they are, you know, being trained and, 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 you know, have sort of the full knowledge of how the Magento Cloud uh, works. So, you know, this is intended to, to work in exactly the same way way it does today in terms of the way that you work with your solution partners. 
So that's a deep dive on the, uh, the, the product, what it is, the solution. And I want to touch shortly, just before I wrap up, a little bit on, on pricing and, and how pricing works for this. So it's, it's an all-inclusive price. It's one throat to choke. It's, it's an annual subscription in the same way that Enterprise Edition is today. And included in that pricing is your Fastly CDN and DDoS um, with, like I said, generous bandwidth allowances. If you are a total sort of high-resolution video hog, then there may be some overage costs. But for the general merchant, um, the allowances that we give should be more than adequate for your, uh, for your, for your site traffic. Uh, we give full unrestricted versions of New Relic APM Pro and Blackfire, so you don't need to get into this debate with your SI anymore of, hey, we need these tools, who's paying for them? It's all included in part of the cost. You get your full Magento 2 Enterprise Edition license, exactly as you, you do today if you buy Enterprise Edition, and, and we give you this contractual flexibility to walk away from cloud, but keep your Enterprise Edition license. So you can convert from one contract type to another if you decide, hey, this, this cloud thing isn't working out for us, but we, we want to keep Magento, we'll, we'll allow you to take the license and convert from a, a, a cloud edition to an Enterprise Edition license. We give you full access to the pass, as I described. Um, so you can have unlimited number of users in there, your own users, your system integrator, your agency. Um, and we give you, by you know, standard, eight non-production environments. These are your regression testing, QA staging environments. You can have more. Um, there's, there's a small incremental charge if you want more non-development, uh, sorry, non-production environments. We give you the backups, we talked about that, and you get this triple redundancy, um, dedicated AWS environment. One of the things that I, I didn't mention is that in, in AWS, it's your AWS service, so you're getting a dedicated environment. It's only your code, it's only your Magento instance that's running in there. So unlike a multi-tenant SaaS solution where you're actually sharing virtualized infrastructure with all the other merchants, um, the, the infrastructure that we provisioned for AW in, in Magento Cloud is your infrastructure only your Magento is running on there. And so, you know, if it's, you know, running at, say, 30% capacity, you know, you know that there's no one else sort of using your capacity. It's there ready, waiting for, you know, for, for your merchants as, as you see additional traffic. And then all the monitoring um, application infrastructure is all included in the pricing. So how does pricing work? Um, it's a little bit of a sort of hybrid model between sort of a traditional, uh, you know, sort of hosting environment um, where you would need to sort of size your servers and provide page views and so forth um, with sort of the familiar um, Magento Enterprise Edition uh, structure. So when, if you're, if you're looking at Enterprise Cloud Edition, you're, you're interested in getting pricing, um, go to your solution partner or come directly to us um, and you know, we, we will price this for you and we will ask a few questions. So we'll want to know where you're hosting. Um, it's a little bit more expensive to host in Asia or in, in uh, Sao Paulo than it is in Europe or North America. So the, the location where you want to deploy um, impacts the price a little bit. Um, how much storage you need um, impacts the price a little bit. Um, your GMV tier um, impacts the price in the same way that Magento 2 Enterprise Edition is priced based on your merchant GMV, um, so is Cloud Edition. And then we do need to work out that sort of baseline compute infrastructure on a normal standard day without those peaks. What, what's the sort of uh, infrastructure that we need to provision for you? So we'll ask you your, your orders per day, your, your, you know, your, page, your peak page views today and so forth to help you um, understand that. And then, and then there's add-ons, things like additional uh, development environments if you want a dedicated staging environment in production as opposed to one of the sort of um, past provisioned uh, staging environments. So Ultimately, it all comes down to, though, there's a fixed annual fee. Um, very, very simple for you to understand. It's not, a, um, it's not a revenue share like some of our SaaS competitors. It's a simple fixed annual fee um, based on the configuration that you provision. So that's, that's Magento Enterprise Cloud Edition. I hope that was sort of helpful and insightful for those of you who you know, were not at Imagine and haven't seen this content before and potentially interested. Uh, and we can now open, I think we've got five minutes left between me and drinks. So uh, any questions, please raise your hand. There's a couple of people at the back um, with, with microphones and, and we'll take questions. Don't be shy. So. Hello, my name is Vipin. I'm from WebCool Software India. I would, I would like to know how the third-party plugins will be incorporated with the Magento Cloud Edition. 
So how third-party plugins work into Magento exactly, Cloud? Exactly, exactly. Right, right. So it's exactly the same model as it is with, with Enterprise Edition. Uh, you know, the, the extensions and Marketplace work exactly the same. You go to Marketplace, you download, buy your extension, and you install them exactly the same way as you do with Enterprise Edition. There's, there's no difference whatsoever. Okay, and top of that, any kind of customization, if you're doing on that plugin, then it will be managed by the GitHub only. So, sorry, what was the, can you if repeat? If we are making any customization on top of that, then how it will be managed? Oh, if you've done customization to yeah. your core? Um, yeah, again, it's, it's, it's the same, um, it works exactly the same as it does for, uh, you know, for enterprise editions. Have you done customizations and you're in, in, you know, deploying the, the plugin through, through Composer, um, you know, any conflicts that might be there and so forth, you know, it's, it's exactly the same challenge as you would, or, or the same issue, of a way of resolving that as, as it is with Enterprise Edition. There's nothing different about the way that Cloud Edition works from, from a sort of compatibility of extension perspective. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Hi. <coughs> oh, Ingar yeah. Melby from Komoot Group. Yeah. Uh, when you s scale up the three different um, um, environments, mm -hmm. um, you said it's very fast. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, yeah, so um, I, I think if I remember correctly, and um, Doug can we'll get more details on this tomorrow, we can scale, we can completely scale the environment from start to finish in about 15 minutes. Um, so it takes about, you know, because we're, we're doing it effectively three times. We're taking one of the nodes down, and then we're bringing it back up, provisioned on double the AWS infrastructure. Then we do it for the second node and the third node. So complete end-to-end to, -end to uh, effectively double the compute capacity of the environment takes about 15 minutes. Will you use the first node to, you know, uh, the customers, will they get access to the first node when it's scaled up? Or will you wait until the three nodes are all scaled up? Um, I may need to defer to one of the cloud technical experts on, on, on that, but, but it's all sort of automated through the, the load balancer, and so we, you know, we, we take the traffic away from the first one, load it onto the, the, the second to bring the, up, effectively upgrade that first node, bring it back online. So my, my assumption is that as soon as it's online, we're then routing traffic to that then doubled capacity. Um, so there's a, a temporary sort of loss in capacity as we first do it, but then very quickly we're back up to where we were and then very quickly we're, we're at double the capacity. And if that wasn't enough, we'll do it again and we'll do it again. Cool. Any other questions? Yep, one at the back here. Hi, yeah. Um, you, you're kind of pitching yourself against um, Rackspace, for example, uh, and you know if we have a problem with our site, uh, the PHP configuration's wrong, we're in a memory max execution time, or you get an Apache Segfault Nginx, something's going wrong, how do we contact you to fix that, or is that something you proactively monitor as well? Yes, yeah, so, you know, um, there is a full, um, we're providing full um, support for the entire stack, including all of the services that are running, whether it's, uh, you know, Nginx or, or, or Apache, or it runs on Nginx, or, or any of the services that are there, um, Elasticsearch, et cetera. So, you know, if there's something, and, and, and we sort of deploy with a standard configuration. We, you know, we, we've set up all these services and tuned them and configured them the way that we believe is, is sort of the best practices for running Magento 2. But ultimately, you know, if there is an issue or you, know, you do want to make a configuration change, you can submit a support ticket through to, through to us, through to the Magento Cloud, um, and our experts will deal with that support ticket in the way that any, you know, in exactly the same manner as a normal hosting provider would. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll contact you within the SLAs, we'll, uh, you know, we'll We'll make that configuration change if it's a configuration change that's appropriate, or you know if there is some kind of outage or issue, we'll we'll start working with you on, on diagnosing that. So from that perspective, it's just like a, a tr traditional hosting environment in that you have full 24 by 7 ability to submit tickets and uh, and support issues. Yeah, sorry, kind of follow up to that is uh, I mean again a provider like Rackspace has an awful lot of support infrastructure ticketing systems and things. Is this something Magento are committed to scaling as the customers grow? So, so, sorry, is, is this a question around sort of the, the SLAs? And the SLAs, you, and yeah. are you, I say, somebody like Rackspace has a, a lot of engineer support, yeah. um, a very 
well-established ticketing system, first line, second line support, yep. escalation processes, SLAs. Is yep. this something Magento is committed to? Yeah, ab absolutely. We're committed to providing that. You know, we've been investing a lot in, into those processes, stress testing those processes, making sure that we've been, um, you know, ramping up the hiring of our own internal support people and engineers to be able to provide that. Um, so, so this, you know, the simple answer is yes, and we will continue to invest in that business uh, as, as we need to do so. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it, th th this is not something we're just sort of taken lightly. There's been a big focus on making sure that we have that, you know, maturity of ticketing process, that we have um, the engineers behind the scenes who are skilled and know what they're doing in these environments. Um, another question from... Hi, um, I'm Yusuf Sisko from Harvard Nichols. Um, I'm just wondering what happens when we need to fine tune the rest of the stack. So for example, we're on Fastly right now and we've been doing a lot of changes to our VCL, optimizing the caching, like. Down, down to every request and making sure that that's fine. Does that have to go through your ticketing system or is that something that we just have access to and we're able to like update as, as we go? So, so sort of fine tuning some of the configurations and fine, fine tuning things like the fastly caching configuration and then maybe things lower down the stack. Yeah, so um, you do have access to the, you know, the Fastly tools and, and um, uh, both within Magento and I believe correctly inside of the actual Fastly application itself. So as it relates to sort of fine tuning exactly, you know, what objects are cached and the expirations and so forth, you have complete control as if you were, you know, working directly with Fastly. We're not locking anything down. So you do have that, that, that complete level control. And I, and the Fastly team are here at the front, so they may be able to answer, answer better for me. Do you want to, I can get, grab a microphone at the front. <laughs> the short answer is you can reuse the VCL code. Um, as he said, it's literally the same implementation. Um, it's just through the stack. Okay. And if there's any more technical questions, um, I'm, I'm less of the technical guy. I'm more kind of the business guy. So, but, but Doug's doing a whole technical deep dive session tomorrow. So please bring as many of your technical questions along tomorrow, and you know we'll, we'll have all the experts on the, on, on the stage then. So listen, I know we've got um, drinks outside. Um, our sponsor, PFS Web, has you know kindly invested theirs, and it's end of day. So thank you all for joining, and we'll, we'll get get to drinks. Thank you.